Welcome back to another video, and today I'm going to be showing you how to implement a queue using an array. And right now I'm in the main method, and I just have a one print statement that just prints hello world. So if we run that, we get hello world. The first thing we need to do is we need to create a new class. So we're going to do that, and then we have to give it a name. In my case, I'm going to just call it array queue because that's what it is. Okay, now we're in a new class called array queue. Now we have to define some variables. So we're going to make all our variables private because we don't want the user to have access to these because we want the user to think like this is an actual queue that comes with Java. We don't want them to think like, oh, we made this for them. So they're going to be private and this queue is going to hold integers. So we're going to make our array of integers and I'm just naming the array a just, just something simple. And then we're going to have another private integer variable called head. For those who don't know, like a queue is like a line of people, like at McDonald's, ready to order. The person in front of the line gets to order first, and the person in the back of the line has to like wait their turn into there at the front of the line to order. So the head variable just represents like the person in the front of the line. And then we could do private int tail. This just represents the person in the back. And then we could do private int n. So n is going to be a counter pretty much. It's just going to count however many like um, numbers we have in our queue. Whenever we add a number, we increment n by one. So now we just have to like initialize our variables and we can do that inside of the constructor. So we could do public, the name of our class, which is array queue. And then we could assign these variables to something. We want to assign a, we want to initialize a, the way we do that, we get a equals new int. And then we have to um, actually like give a value however big the array is going to be in this case I'm just going to pick uh, the number 256 so a the max size is going to be 256 so the max size of our queue is going to be 256 elements and then we're going to uh, we're going to assign head equal to zero because there's nothing in the queue yet same thing equal to the tail it's going to be equal to zero and the same thing equal to n because there's nothing in the in the queue yet so first we're going to define some method that we're going to be using in other methods. So like the very first method I wanted to find is going to be the size method. We do public int size. The reason it's going to be of type integer is because we're going to be returning n. And n is an integer so it has to be of type int. So we can do return n. So how, whenever we want to know how big our queue is we can just return the n variable. And we're going to be managing the n variable. As I said, whenever we add something to it, we're going to increase n by 1. Whenever we remove something, we're going to remove, um, we're going to decrease n by 1. And then we're going to have another method called is empty, And it's going to be of type boolean. So it's either going to be true or false. So is, is empty. And then we're going to be getting an error because we have to return something, either true or false. We could return size the size method we just defined equals equals to zero. This is the fast way of writing if it's if it's empty, if it equals zero, it's gonna return true. But if it's not equal to zero, it's gonna return false. This is just a fast way of writing it. Okay, now that we have these two methods, we could actually start writing like the main methods of the D, of the um, of the Q class. Uh, the to me the very, the most important method is gonna be like the add method. Or in case for queues, it's gonna be it's gonna call it in queue because they want it to be different. In queues is just add method. So we could say public void. It's going to be a void method because it's not going to like return anything. It's just going to do something in queue. And then whenever like a user makes an object of the array queue class, they could call the in queue method and they could pass in a number for us to like add it. In this case, their number is going to be of integer, of course. And then we'll call it, we'll just call it item. Whatever, let's say they pass in five, five is going to be stored in the item, and then here we could uh, add it to the queue. But first, we could do some error checking. So we could say if size, remember that method we, we defined in the beginning, we're going to be using it a lot. So we could say if size equals a dot length, if that's the case, we know that the array is going to be full. So the, in, the, in our case, the, the queue is going to be full. So we could just return to get out of there because we can't like add more to a full array. And then we could check if tail greater or equal to a dot length again. We can't do anything if it's 
greater than the length, in this case our length would be 256, we can assign tail equal to zero. That way we don't get any errors. And now we could say A at something equals to item. And remember, item is just whatever the user wants to add into the queue. And we could say A at tail. Remember, tail just holds a number. So we're saying array at whatever number tail is. And then we could increment tail plus plus. We're just incrementing tail by one. And then we're going to increment n by one. Because remember, n is going to be like the size of the queue. So we want to manage n. So whenever we call the size method, it returns the correct size. So that's going to be the nq method. That's pretty much the add method. And then we're going to need a remove method. So queues, they call it a different name. They call it dq. And they do the remove method a little, a little different. So with dq, let me code it out. So we could say public int. I'll, I'll tell you why it's going to be of type integer right now. So queues, whenever you remove something, you also return it. So our queue is going to be of type integer, and that's why the method is going to be of type integer. So first, let's do some error checking again. We want to be sure the queue is not empty. We could say if is empty. Remember, it's one of the methods we defined in the beginning. That's why we did it. If is if if empty is true, we could just like return like a default number. We'll just return negative one if it's empty. But if it's not empty, you see we're getting a little error right here because it wants us to return something. So we're going to do that right now. So we could let's define a variable we'll return. So we can't name our variable return because it's like a keyword. So we'll just call it ret. We could say ret equals to a, which is our array at head. And whatever a at head is, is going to be stored inside of ret. And then we could increment head. So we're going to do head plus plus, And then we're going to decrement n because we're taking something away from the queue. So the size of the queue is like less. And then we could check. We, we don't want head. Um, we don't want head to be bigger. Kind of like uh, then uh, a lot the, the array dot length kind of we did here. So let's do that. So we could say if head greater or equal to a dot length, we're going to assign we're going to assign head to zero because we don't want it to be bigger. That will cause an error. We could say head equals to zero. And if that's not the case, we could just return whatever it's inside of ret. Because remember, ret equals a dot a at head, which would just be a at a number, which is just the array. So there's our dq method. And then uh, queues, they also have a method called peak. It just returns like the first element, but it doesn't remove it. So let's define that real quick. We could do public. So we're going to be returning a, like a number. So it's going to be of type integer. And then we're going to call it peak. And then once again, we're going to check if is empty. If it's true, it's literally going to copy and paste it. We're going to return negative 1. But if it's not empty, we're going to return our array, which is called a at something, but in this case we'll just return a at head. And that, that's its empty um, method. Let me see what other methods I'm forgetting. We pretty much have like the main ones. We have in queue, dq, peak, is empty, size. Let's do the clear method. So a queue, it could be, it has to be able to be cleared if, say we want to just remove everything we've added. So we could do public void because it's not going to do anything clear and then I thought of another method I want to add right now so we really can't remove like elements from an array it's kind of harder but we could just set everything back to zero so we could set head back to zero tail back to zero and then n back to zero it doesn't remove anything but it sets everything back to zero so we could override pretty much all the elements of the array say there's something in one since head is zero, and we want to add something to it, I'll add it first to zero, and then to and then to one, and whatever was in one is going to be replaced. So that's how we could make like our own like clever like clear method. And then I want to do like a two string method, so we could see everything we add to it. We could do public string. It's going to return a, a string, so it's going to be of type string two string. And then we could say str
string s equals to an empty string, and then we get have a for loop. We can say for int i, we'll set that equal to head, and then we'll do i less than tail, and we'll increment i. And there we could have our variable s, which is just an empty string, plus equals a at i, which a is just our array again, and then i is just uh, equal to head, and then we're going to be incrementing i. And then we're getting an error because it's going to be a number, but we have to return of type string. So we also want our, our all our numbers to be separated by a comma, so we'll just add a comma and that'll get rid of the error because now it's a string. And now it's, we're still getting an error, now we just have to return s, because a uh, we have to return a, something of type string, and then s is what we want to return because it's a string. And then I'm thinking that's it for our array queue. I may have forgot a couple methods, but I think that's good enough right now. So I'm going to copy the name of the class because we're going to use it to create objects in our main method. So we could say array queue, and then we have to give the object a name. I'm going to just call it queue for simple, for short. Equals new array queue. And now we have an object of type array queue, and all the, all the methods we define for the array queue class, queue has access to. So we could say in queue, which is like the add method. We could add 10 to the queue. And then we're going to run this a couple more times. We're going to add 23 for LeBron, and then 24 for Kobe. And now if we do queue.toString, it's not going to print anything because it's going to return a string. But if we put that inside the print statement, it's actually going to print something. It's going to print all the queue. Since 10 was first, it's in the beginning of the queue. 23 was second, it's behind 10. It's like a line of people. And then 24 is last. So 24 is right there. And then let's try q.dq. So remember, dq removes someone from like the line, but it removes the first one. So if we run it, it got rid of 10 because 10 was first. But remember, dq also returns something. So we do an integer variable called x, 10 should be stored in x. So if we do x in the print statement, it should just have 10 because 10 was stored in there. Let's do q.size. So this should just return n, which is the size. If we run that, it should be 2, which is correct, because we call dq, which removed the number 10. So now we only have 23 and 24. Let's see what else we could do. Let's try is empty. So that should return false, because it's not empty, because there's two things in there. So we could say q dot is empty. False, because there's stuff in there. Let's do q dot clear and then since we're calling clear is empty is true is empty is true because we called clear let's see if it actually cleared it let's do clear, uh, q dot to string oh, I'm forgetting one of these and now it doesn't print anything because we called the clear method but if we call if we get rid of the clear method and the dq method it should just print 10 23 24 uh, it looks like it's working if this helped in any way just leave a like and subscribe